Hi there booktube, it's Eleanor here and um, it's a bit of a surprise really for me that I'm making this video because at the beginning of the year and when we moved house I was like oh I'm not going to buy any books, I've got loads of books, I'm not going to buy any and um, I have been really good with that actually, I've just been enjoying the books that are on my shelf but I hadn't been watching YouTube videos, I hadn't been watching the booktube videos um, I'd really just not been watching them while I hadn't been making videos and I'd had this sort of hiatus really from YouTube and from making videos and then recently I've just wanted to go back and watch them and even though I haven't been watching them I have this habitual um, thing of putting them into a watch later list. I go through every day the ones on my subscription feed and then I put them on my watch later list and it's just a habit that I've got into and so I did have a lot on there and I thought well rather than going through the 500 odd backlist starting from the oldest I'll start from the most recent and then keep doing it that way and then at least I'll always be up to date and obviously the most recent are the best of 2020 and people's favourite reads and I just thought it was really nice to watch those uh, they're always my favourite videos to watch and I just really enjoyed it and obviously that then led to me wanting to pick up some books I've been quite restrained really for me I feel and so there's not too many books on this list but there is a few so if you see me looking down there I'm looking at my puppy who I have locked in the room with me while I'm filming because he's uh, annoying my daughter um, but we're still on puppy wee and poo watch. Uh, Ron! Ron! Come! Off! That's it. Good boy sit down. Sit down now please. We might get enough time to do this before he uh, he's desperate. So let's see how we get on. Anyway, so as I was saying, I watched People's Best of 2020 and here is the stack of books that for me came from that. Uh, it's from various people's uh, lists. I think we've got, uh, oh gosh, who have we got? Definitely Olive from A Book Olive. There's something that Mercedes recommended. There is um, a series that quite a lot of people recommended and really enjoyed. There is, oh, things from all sorts of different people. Um, all sorts of different people. Anyway, let's move into the books because that's why we're all here, isn't it? The first one is a book by Matt Haig and it's The Midnight Library. I'm hearing it talked about a lot and Matt Haig is somebody that I've really enjoyed his sort of Santa Claus Christmas books for children and I haven't ever delved into his grown-up books and so this one is one that really piqued my interest in terms of the synopsis. So the basic premise from this from what I can understand is that Between Life and Death is a library and I'm not sure if this uh, particular person, our main character, has committed suicide but I get the feeling that something has happened um, and she is in this library and it's about looking back on the past and rewriting wrongs and um, I think it does deal with some quite heavy topics but I think it's done in a lighter hand don't quote me on that but it said would you have done anything different if you had the the chance to undo your regrets i think it's going to be quite powerful and it's definitely one that has piqued my interest when i've heard people talking about it i absolutely adore i've just opened this book and i adore the fact that it's got this sort of pretend uh library card on the inside so this is one that i look forward to picking up and see if it hits the mark for me like it did for so many of you in 2020. the next stacks of uh, stack of books is from a particular author that i keep seeing talked about specifically one book i've seen a lot of uh but there i've got quite a few here there is one that i saw talked about uh towards the middle of 2020 and also in people's lists and that was American Queen and her, it's by Sierra Simone. This is, um, she, she's a romance, quite an erotic writer I believe. I think a lot of her books involve um, a lot of sexy times and this one is says it starts with the president sending his best friend to woo me on his behalf and it ends with my heart split in two. So something to do with the president maybe and yeah I think I'm 
this will be interesting. I like uh, books that involve sort of royalty or presidents or uh, politics, politicians or people in power. I don't know. I quite like that sort of um, storyline. So this one definitely piqued my interest. And then the other one, which is just seen on everybody's list this year, some loved, some didn't love so much, is Sierra Simone's um, series. I don't know if it's called the Lesson in Thorns series, but it starts with this very raunchy looking cover called A Lesson in Thorns. And then I've also picked up Harvest of Size, Door of Bruises. And I think there's a fourth that I'm waiting to come in the post. I thought I'd get all four in case I wanted to have a bit of a binge. Um, this one, from what I can gather, is about a group of children that's family have got together at this big mansion every year and then they've sort of been thrown together because their parents have been together and I think that we then skip years later and something is happening, there's um, something's going to happen between all of these people, there's maybe going to be a lot of sexy times and sharing of saliva, I don't know, but I've heard it's really good. So I trust you all and it's a very, very erotic front cover this. I think it's quite seductive and yeah, I'll come back to you and let you know what I think and I'll obviously be able to tell you a bit more of the plot. But from what I've heard from people, it's got an interesting plot. It's got a lot of sexy times. It's quite unusual. I think maybe there might be some BDSM in there not sure but Sierra Simone is the author on my list for 2021 that I want to give a go so I've got plenty here to be trying. The next book I think was definitely the one that I saw on Olive's channel and I love any everything every time uh, Olive talks about non-fiction books my ears prick up and then I listen for when she talks about nature in the natural world because I know she loves them as much as I do and I've had so many great recommendations from her over the years and this one um, looks really good it's Fireflies Honey and Silk by Gilbert Waldbar. Now I think this was on her list of books to read this month so maybe not on her top, oh, it might have been on her top list, it might, I can't remember but I just thought it sounded really interesting. It says a journey that takes the reader far beyond the domain of crickets on the hearth and butterflies in the garden, a buzz with obscure lore about a host of bugs there that are as accommodating to humans as bedbugs, fleas and mosquitoes are annoying and that was by Natural History. Uh, magazine so I'm looking forward to getting stuck in and just reading um, a bit more about the natural world I love anything to do with insects bees bugs um, fireflies this just sounds right up my alley really I've seen a couple of people talk about this one I'm trying to think for the life of me who it was I saw recently someone had it in their vlog I can't remember I'm going to check because it'll annoy me if I can't remember who it was and they should get recognition for talking about it. Who was it? Let's go back. Who was it? Ah, Zoe, Zoe Delaney. Um, I love her channel. I just think she's got a really lovely channel. She's a really lovely human. I can just, you know, when you watch something, you can just sense. I just get this really warm feeling. I just really like her and I really love watching her videos she obviously puts a lot of time and effort into making her vlogs and it comes across it really does come across it's very calming and uh, she's really got a lovely gentle way about her in terms of the way she speaks and she was reading this and um, it, it piqued my interest and it's called Eat by Sweeney Boo and it says Mindy is a young woman living with an eating disorder and trapped in a battle of her own self-worth when she accidentally discovers something that will give her a chance to revisit her past the relationship she's lost the mistake she's made all of it she thinks she has a chance to undo every wrong turn to put her life back on track but will she be able to find a way back to her present and just as important a way to treat herself with love and kindness at any size and I just think this sounds like it's hopefully got a really positive message it's only a little graphic novel uh, but again I like the artwork in here it's my color palette it's my type of art you know quite bold quite cartoony so I'm looking forward to trying that one and then the other graphic novel is a complete turn in another direction and this is one I saw on Mercedes channel I don't often pick up recommendations from Mercedes she has very different reading taste to me and so often I I watch her videos just because I enjoy hearing her talk about books but I don't tend to pick up anything that she talks about because 
we have very different tastes but occasionally there's like a little gem in there that I'm just like oh yes that's definitely um one that I'm interested in and so this she talked about and it's Grass by Kyum Suk Gendry Kim and this really piqued my interest it's a graphic novel it's in black and white which is unusual for me uh, but not unheard of for me to give a try. I believe that this um, talks about sexual slavery um, that was endured by Korean girls and women during the Second World War. That's something that I've always been quite interested in. I've read a lot of books um, about Japanese um, internment camps and various different things that happened in Japan and Korea um, during the Second World War. And so I really wanted to read this. It sounds like it's a really important book, quite harrowing, um, but important to remember nonetheless so that mistakes of the past aren't made in our future so I look forward to reading this one this next book just sounds like a book lover's dream it's called happily ever afters by Elise Bryant and this is about our main character whose name is Tessa and she is a budding novelist and one of the things that she likes is that she writes books for people um, like her to find themselves in books we always talk about how important it is to be able to see yourself in writing and she doesn't see that in writing every day she doesn't see herself um, pictured and written into these romance stories and so that's what she wants to do and so she gets um, a, I think she gets into a writing program but when she starts the writing program she just loses her sort of mojo and decides that instead she is going to find inspiration by finding herself romance following the steps of a romance novel and this just sounds really fun and sweet and charming and uh, it's definitely one that I wanted to pick up. Elise Bryant um, is a black author and she's writing um, a book that is promoting and p picturing front and centre a black protagonist, which is something that I really like to see in books. Uh, the next book is non-fiction. It appeared on so many people's top of 2020. It's one that I would never really have considered picking up, uh, but I saw it on Instagram, I saw it on YouTube, I saw it on bestseller lists, and I thought, okay. I then did a little bit of research into this book. I watched some uh, videos about this author talking about their book and I remember following this author when I was much younger and she's a similar age to me so I remember the TV show that she was in during her first marriage to Nick Lachey um, so if you haven't guessed um, this is Open Book by Jessica Simpson I think this deals with some really difficult topics I think it deals with um, child abuse I think it deals with um, alcoholism and there's a lot that's gone on in Jessica's life but I hear this is very unflinching very open and very honest and I, I just I really find that inspirational and I've heard really good things so I'm looking forward to reading this and discovering a bit more about Jessica Simpson for myself and then the final book is I sort of went out on a limb uh, to pick it up but I saw it advertised on um, the board game geek was it the board game geek no the dice tower which is i follow a lot of board game youtubers because i find inspiration there for board games that i want to pick up um, and this one was advertised on there recently it's called the board game book volume 2 2020 2021 and it is literally a book full of board games and how they're played and information about them and how to play them and what they're going to be about there's beautiful pictures and there's um all sorts of information in here and it's just a lovely it's a big book it's going to be quite a nice sort of coffee table book and um, it says on the back board games have become one of the world's hottest hobbies with thousands of new releases hitting store shelves every year the board game book is your guide to the most exciting new tabletop titles from quick and silly games for kids and families to complex strategic challenges featuring more than a hundred of the year's top games and packed with insightful reviews beautiful photography and fascinating interviews with game designers this is an essential addition to any gamer's book bookshelf and uh, what more could you ask for really I'm really excited to just dip into this when I want to get some inspiration for a new board game so 
that is the books that I've picked up. I don't suppose I'll be picking up very more for a while, but I'm really pleased that I went with those. They're some of the top books that I've noticed cropping up on people's lists. Have you read any of these? Were any of these on your top lists for 2020? Let me know in the comments down below. Put in the comments down below any books that you think I might enjoy, any five-star reads that you read in 2020, ones that you've heard about that you think keep cropping up on lists that you think might be of interest. Um, and who knows, maybe that'll be my next book haul. Um, but for now, that's it from me and I look forward to speaking to you soon. Bye for now, booktube.